Hey guys, we recently introduced a new tweeter. It's a waveguide version of our LD25X, and we've had a lot of questions about it. So we wanted to do a quick video covering uh, waveguides and what the benefits uh, of a waveguide are. This is the new tweeter, and um, it's a seven inch CNC uh, aluminum waveguide. Uh, so you can see it's really thick. It's uh, really dead. Uh, it doesn't ring. Uh, we went with uh, CNC aluminum because we think it's a lot nicer look and um, being a big chunk like this, uh, it helps prevent any resonances that you might get out of a thinner plastic mold. Um, you can definitely mold plastic and you can put ribs into it to stiffen it, uh, but generally you need to fill it with some kind of damping material uh, to help it keep it from ringing uh, in the cabinet. This because it's so thick and we left so much of the aluminum on there. Uh, definitely isn't going to ring at all. Uh, the amount of energy it takes to, to cause this massive aluminum to ring is much more than you can get from uh, standard use in a cabinet. So uh, talking about the benefits of, of a waveguide, there are really four main benefits. So benefit number one is uh, the waveguide is going to change the dispersion pattern of a tweeter. So when we look at a standard tweeter uh, like this, uh, at the lower frequencies that the, that the tweeter operates at, the waves are going to spread very broadly. Um, that is not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but when you're mating up to a larger driver, um, the larger driver is starting to beam and off axis, the energy is dropping off very quickly uh, on a larger woofer. So on a seven inch woofer, uh, above two kilohertz, you're getting some pretty significant roll off in the top octave, whereas a tweeter, uh, you know, a standard tweeter like this is starting to get much broader down at those frequencies. Overall, a driver's off-axis behavior is really dictated by the size of the diaphragm. Uh, so the larger the diaphragm, the faster it's going to roll off off-axis at the higher frequencies. Uh, it, it's going to be broad at low frequencies um, and then narrow at high frequencies. Uh, so a tweeter being much smaller than a 7-inch woofer is going to be broad at much higher frequencies. Uh, so a tweeter typically will start to narrow, uh, depending on the tweeter, anywhere from you know, 10 to 7 to 10 kilohertz, uh, whereas a woofer might start to narrow at um, 1.5 to 2.5 kilohertz. Uh, part of that is based off the design of the diaphragm itself, the shape, of it, uh, but a lot of it is just based off the raw size of the piston. Uh, so uh, when we start to look at the lower frequencies as it gets below that beaming frequency, the, the energy that's dispersed into the room gets broader and broader to where at some point it's radiating in essentially uh, a point source behavior. And when that happens, what, what we get when we're crossing to a, a larger woofer uh, is if we cross say at like two, kilohertz, the woofer is starting to roll off in frequency where the tweeter is getting broader. And so you get this discontinuity in the, the dispersion pattern. So a waveguide, what it does is uh, because it kind of matches the shape of a, um, a seven inch driver or whatever size waveguide you have, uh, it focuses the beam of sound more in the forward direction. So instead of broadening and spreading out, you get this uh, energy starting to focus. And that's why we see a boost in the low frequency energy when we put a tweeter in a waveguide because it's focusing that energy and putting more of it in the forward radiating direction. Uh, so that brings us to benefit number two, which is that because you're getting this acoustic boost down at the lower frequencies, uh, you to, to cross over to a woofer and bring the tweeter level back to flat, you're actually lowering the bottom end of the tweeter operation more than you would when it's on a, a standard flat baffle, you know, regular faceplate tweeter. Uh, so what we get from that is a reduction in distortion. Uh, so the distortion at the low frequencies is reduced because you're getting more acoustic energy projected forward and therefore you have to lower that level in the crossover. So if we get 6 dB of, of gain from the waveguide, we'll end up with at least 6 dB of reduction in distortion down in those frequencies. Uh, so that's that's the second big benefit is that it, it reduces the, distor the distortion significantly at lower frequencies. And it also, uh, because of that, allows you potentially to cross lower uh, to another driver, which again can help with directivity match. 
All right, benefit number three. So because you're projecting that wave more forward and less out to the sides, uh, one of the other benefits is that you reduce the illumination of the cabinet ed edges. So you're going to see less uh, baffle step or diffraction ripple uh, when you're using a waveguide because more of that energy is being directed forward. Um, so baffle step and diffraction are still there and you will definitely see on a standard width baffle with no edge treatment, you'll start to see some bunching around, you know, two and a half, three kilohertz uh, in your off axis, but uh, it's drastically reduced compared to a standard tweeter. And the uh, fourth and last benefit is that uh, you can align the acoustic centers of the drivers a little easier. The waveguide sets the tweeter back, uh, you know, one to one and a half inches, and the center of the woofer is usually about an inch or so behind a, a standard tweeter on a flat baffle. Uh, and so the only real thing that this does is it allows some options with uh, crossover slopes that you might not have otherwise. So those are the benefits on paper. Now let's talk about how that might sound in your room. Uh, so a waveguide speaker is definitely better for someone who has a very reflective room, especially if you have really reflective sidewalls that are close to your speaker. Uh, that is going to help control the directivity pattern so that you're getting you know, a very similar sound off axis as to what you're getting on axis. When you get that very constant slope off axis that helps avoid uh, certain areas, um, I'll call it flare, uh, getting brighter uh, around those frequencies where the, the, that flare up in frequencies is happening on the tweeter where it's blooming. Um, but if you don't have close sidewalls and you don't have close reflections, you may not hear a lot of difference between two very similar speakers, uh, one being a waveguide and one not, um, because you're going to hear majority. The majority of what you're going to hear is the uh, direct uh, sound. So the, the direct on axis sound is, is uh, most of what you're going to hear if you don't have a lot of reflections in your room. Uh, so if you've got a lot of acoustic treatments or, uh, again, your sidewalls are very far away, it may not be as much of a benefit to you. Um, the other thing that I've noticed over the years is uh, waveguides tend to narrow the dispersion some, uh, whereas a, a regular tweeter might have a much broader dispersion. And that broad dispersion, um, even if you don't have close sidewalls, is putting a little extra high frequency energy into the room. And that results in a slightly different sound. Um, I find things that have narrower dispersion to be a little more focused and closed in with like a very defined center image, everything is very easy to locate and very pinpoint, uh, but it's it's a little more closed in on the sound stage, whereas a broad dispersion tends to have a slightly bigger sound stage and some of the high frequency content can be a little more airy and, and open sounding sometimes. Um, again, that's gonna be a lot dependent on your room. It, in a really reflective room, a, a broader dispersion speaker may be really overly bright for you. Uh, so in the end, it's kind of a trade-off and it depends on what you want and how well designed both speakers are. Uh, and, th and that's really the, the ultimate thing is how well designed the speaker is, is going to play a huge role in, in how it sounds. So if you like these videos and you want to see more of this type of content, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel. Uh, we're going to keep posting technical videos, build videos, uh, all sorts of other content. So if you want to stay updated, make sure you hit the subscribe and notification button. Uh, so that you get an email letting you know every time we drop a new video.